Hi, I'm Stu from Hive Mind Automation and welcome back to The Hive. In this video, we'll be taking a look at this TP-Link Casa Smart Wi-Fi Plug Slim Smart Switch. We've looked at a TP-Link Smart Switch before and I've been really happy with it. So I thought I would explore this newer device, which as the name suggests, is more slimline compared to the other one we tested in the past. So while I roll the intro animation, take a moment to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos each week and also give the thumbs up button a little bit of a tickle. So let's get started. So I promised in the video about the IKEA Trad Free Smart Switch that I would do a comparison video between a bunch of different smart plugs. And that's why a bunch of my recent videos have been about smart plugs. I have been to Bunnings a few times uh, and I was picking up some smart plugs and I saw these ones uh, and I grabbed this one here for $20 and this is the Casa Smart Wi-Fi Plug Slim. While I was there, I also picked up this Casa Smart Wi-Fi Plug Slim with energy monitoring for $25. Now I did mention in the trad free video that if you are just getting started into smart switches that you might want to consider these as an alternative to the IKEA because the cost of entry is lower. So let's take a closer look at them and see how they work. Now it is worth mentioning that the same day that I filled the last video on the TP-Link Casa smart switches, TP-Link did release a new firmware that actually busted the local API into them and broke the Home Assistant integration. Now to their credit, TP-Link were very apologetic about the inconvenience and had a beta version of a new firmware available for use by users fairly quickly. Now I personally never had any issue with my unit, but I did read that a lot of people did have issues and the community was particularly unhappy. Now let's hope that the firmware issues are not a problem for us with these because at this price point with proper Wi-Fi connectivity and no reliance on a cloud service like Tuya, these are a fantastic unit to add to your smart home. So let's get these out of their boxes and the boxes actually are a little bit of a lie because if I open the box here, we'll see that the unit is sitting in the top part of the box and I'll take out these manuals and the unit, it's not even taking up the top half of this box because that waste of packaging is not going to affect the operation of the unit, uh, I'll get over it. Now also inside here, we've got a quick start guide, some safety information and some warranty information. Now, if we look at the unit itself, the build quality feels really great. There's uh, an indicator light just above the outlet socket and we've got a button on the top, a toggle button uh, to turn the load on and off. Uh, now, one thing is that it does extend up from the plug, meaning that at least here in Australia, it does make getting to the switch on a standard outlet a little bit tricky. But of course, the whole purpose of this unit is to switch stuff on and on for us. So again, I think I can live with that. Another thing that's particularly great about these uh, slim units is that like the Brilliant unit, they don't block the sockets adjacent to the smart plug like with the Arlec Grid Connect or the IKEA Trad Free. So if we wanted to, we could plug two or more of these units in next to each other in a power board and not lose any of the ports to the width of the smart switch. Comparing these units even to their own big brother, the HS110 from TP-Link, this unit feels like it's barely half the size. The bigger brother being problematic in power boards and even in dual wall outlets. And these smaller units still have the full 10 amp rating, so there's no downside 
to the smaller size. So what I'll do is I'll plug both units over into my set wall and we'll get them set up, but we will set them up one at a time. <coughs> so I'll start with the energy monitoring unit and I'll turn the switch on at the back first before plugging it in. And uh, we will just adjust this camera a wee bit. And you might just be able to see that light there is flashing from orange to green. And I'm going to pop over to my iPhone here and we'll open up the Casa app. And uh, I haven't actually used Casa on my iPhone before, so I need to log in. Okay, so I've logged in. I'm agreeing to the terms of use because I kind of have to. And we see that we have the smart plugs. We've got our um, washing machine smart plug. This is the HS110, um, which obviously it's offline right now because it's in my hand. What I am going to do is tap the plus button in the top right hand corner of the Casa Smart app. And I will tap, I've already given local network permission because I have. And uh, for these things here, we can connect the third party services to help manage the Castle devices. I'm going to tap maybe later for that because I'm not going to worry too much about those just yet. I'm going to probably be using these with Home Assistant anyway. We'll tap got it and we'll tap the plus button again. And what device would I like to add? I would like to add a device and got it. And I want to tap smart plugs. Now it needs location permission to scan and connect to the cast device and get accurate sunrise and sunset times. Disable this later, I'll tap OK. And we will allow while using the app, that's fine. So I'm going to select smart plugs again. And we're going to select the smart plug mini because we see the model number here is KP105 or KP115. And we happen to have the KP105 and the KP115 here. So I'll tap 105 and power it up, which is already done and I'll tap next. And it's asking me to look at the smart plug. Is it blinking orange and green or orange and blue, which it is. So I will tap next and I need to join the Casa Smart Wi-Fi network. So I'm going to pop over here, go to settings, go to Wi-Fi and I'm looking for TP-Link smart plug. I'll grab that and I'll swipe back over to connect to the smart plug and it might take a minute or two to make the connection while that's happening. Ah, it's already happened so we don't need to worry about it. Now it's found the following networks. I'm going to select the force and type in the password for the force and tap join. So it's connecting to the home network. It says it might take a few minutes and while it's doing that, I'm going to peel this plastic off. Okay, so now we want to give it a friendlier name like living room lamp. I'm going to just call this one energy and tap save and we'll choose an icon. Uh, let's just leave it at the standard one for now and tap save. And congratulations, you've configured your smart plug and it's ready for use in your device list and sounds good. I'm going to plug my test lamp in over here and it's telling me that there's new firmware available uh, and we need to update it. So I'm gonna tap update now. It's gonna take a minute to update that firmware. While we're doing that, I will take the other unit out of the box and get that one ready to set up as well. So the update is complete. Uh, it might take a minute to restart. We'll tap done. And we have our TP-Link energy monitor here on our homepage. Now, before we go digging around into that, I'm going to set up the other plug. So we'll tap the plus button again. We'll tap device. We'll tap smart plugs. We'll tap smart plug mini because this is the KP105. We'll tap next. And we'll tap next again, and we're going to join the Wi-Fi. So we'll go back across to here and we'll connect to this TP-Link smart plug 4DA0 and back over to the Casa smart app. Again, we're going to select the force. It's already got our password there, so we'll just tap join. 
and we're going to give it a name and we're going to just give this one and again we'll uh, leave it at the standard icon and tap save and it's ready to use in our device list sounds good and apparently this one didn't need a firmware update and again we can turn it on and off now if we dig into this particular switch just the switch only we've got our schedule uh, we've got our timer so if we wanted to we could have that uh, change state in uh, a minute and tap start so it's currently off in a minute it's going to turn on if i go back out we can also create an away mode for our start time and end time and also a schedule for when that repeats and we've also got some runtime data in here so we can actually see our current and total runtime on this smart switch uh, and our daily averages etc if we drill into the energy monitor unit uh, we have a little bit more information in here so again we have our uh, off and on our schedule our timer our away mode but instead of our statistics for the hours that it's on if we tap on energy we can see the current power and the total consumption as well as our daily averages for the past seven days and for the past 30 days and we can flip over here and we can see our current runtime and total runtime for today as well as the energy usage and i just heard the other smart switch turn on because of that one minute countdown so that is the casa smart app um, it's fairly rudimentary i mean these are smart switches they're not uh they're not anything more than that so it doesn't need to be anything uh, much more uh, complicated than it is awesome so now we've got them both set up in the app let's take a quick look at home assistant now in the previous video about the tp-link hs 110 we set up the casa smart integration for the purposes of this video i've removed the casa smart integration from my home assistant instance so we can go through setting that up again and show you how simple it actually is so i'm going to head over to my home assistant instance and go to configuration and then go to integrations and we're going to click on add integration in the bottom right hand corner i'm going to type in tp and we've got tp-link casa smart is our first item here so i will click that do you want to set up tp-link smart devices i think i do so i'm going to hit submit and this is going to think about things for a moment and it's auto detecting the tp-link devices on our network it says it's created the configuration for tp-link smart home so i will click finish and it has our tp-link casa smart here in the bottom left if i head back to our overview i'm looking for our switches so where are you sensor switch okay so in the middle here and we have our tp-link switch only and if i turn that off and turn that on uh, we are getting that unit is switching off and on now i'm not seeing the tp link with energy metering so that could be a problem so i'll head back to configuration and integrations and i will just uh, reload the tp link casa smart integration here and it's reloaded that and we'll head back to our overview again and see whether we've got any better luck and here we go we've got our tp-link energy monitor and i'll bring my lamp over here and we will turn that off and it's turning off turn it on it turns on and if i click on this logo next to the tp-link energy monitor uh, just this lightning here and we will see down here we have our current powers 3.88 watts total energy our current voltage which is 248 volts at the socket current in amps which is 0 0.04 uh, and today's energy in kilowatt hours and we've also got our switch 
here. So that's the TP-Link Casa Smart Wi-Fi Plug Slim. Both the KP105 and the KP115 with energy monitoring. Honestly, these units just rock. The Home Assistant integration is frictionless. All the sensors pass through to Home Assistant and it's using a local API instead of any cloud connectivity. I absolutely do recommend these units for any smart home that's requiring some smart plugs. At $20 for this basic unit and $25 for the unit with energy monitoring, there's no need for a bridge and the simple Home Assistant integration is just fantastic. There's no need to flash these units because they are already great right out of the box. So tell me what you think. Do you agree with my assessment or did I get it wrong? Comment down below to keep the conversation going and let me know. That is all we have for this video and I do hope that it helped you in your home automation journey. Please comment down below with home automation ideas that you want to see me cover in future videos. If you liked this video, smash that thumbs up button down below to give it a like. And if you aren't already subscribed, please consider doing so now and make sure that you hit the bell icon so that you get notified when I release new videos each week. Lastly, if you're enjoying what I'm doing here and you wanna to help to support the channel, there is a buy me a coffee link in the video description down below. Those contributions through buy me a coffee are put towards making more and better content for you to enjoy. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Stu from Hive Mind Automation, and I'm looking forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.